morning, Brian with Walnut Farm Bees. So it's uh, kind of a cool start to an October morning. And uh, I want to talk primarily about a controversial subject sometimes, which is that of feeding. Not everyone uh, will agree with what I'm saying, uh, but I want to at least uh, talk about the logistics and why uh, some colonies may need to be fed, why, why others uh, probably do not need to be fed particularly at this time of year. So I'm in uh, one of my yards that has quite a few nukes which are going to be overwintered. Now these started out as a couple frame, small frame colonies in uh, mid-August, so they've built up quite a bit since then. Uh, but because they were small colonies and splits at that time of year, they don't have a lot of field force or uh, the resources that other colonies have. So they do need to be fed if I want to not have to uh, significantly feed over the winter uh, hard food to them. And so that's the reason why if you have a colony and for one reason or another that was a split or a young colony or you're in an area where you had unusual weather and things are very dry, all of those situations can present the need to feed your bees uh, if you want them to have enough for over the winter. And depending upon what area you are in Pennsylvania, uh, you, may, uh, you may have a different timeline as far as when you need to get this finished uh, before things get really cold and they don't have enough time to uh, dry down any sugar syrup that you feed them. And for the most part, we have colonies in both the farthest north area of the state as well as south central uh, Pennsylvania. And down down here where I am right now, it's South Central Pennsylvania. Uh, we have time yet, uh, at least until no, probably until November, unless the weather changes significantly uh, to get feed on colonies. And up north, uh, there's probably a shorter window window of time, depending upon uh, again how, how the weather turns uh, this year. Certainly a little cooler there this week, but it looks like it was warming up enough to feed and. Again, just uh, the drastic difference. I was just looking at some colonies in another yard, which are you know production colonies. They don't need to be fed. They have brought in plenty of resources. It really depends on that situation, the type of colony, and the location. So as far as timing of feed, uh, with a small nuke like this, probably sooner than later, uh, they would need to have been fed. And... Uh, however, with a production size colony, if they are still very full of bees, often we don't even think about weighing them or considering feeding till uh, mid to late September because we don't want them to pack out that colony uh, too early. If done properly, feed can be applied very quickly to a strong colony and get them up to weight. You should know the weight of your hives. Often when we just lift a hive, it seems very heavy, but it may not be uh, realistic realistically uh, heavy. I'll leave a, a kind of a chart and it's just a general recommendation of hive weights at the end of this video. Um, but I suppose if you lift a double deep and you absolutely can't lift it off the ground, it probably is heavy enough. Beyond that, I like the idea of like a luggage scale, weigh both sides, add the weights together, get a good general idea of weights uh, for the colony. And that will depend upon you know, are you running mediums? Are you running deeps? Are they nukes? Are they double nukes? Are they eight frame? Are they 10 frame? Uh, so there's a little bit of variance there as well. Types of feed at this time of year, uh, generally speaking, you shift away from any kind of really light syrup to heavier, thicker syrup. If you're making it yourself uh, with sugar water, you can get close to two to one. It's hard to get, uh, Real two to one or heavier than that because it it'll uh, reach the point where on a cold morning it'll just start gumming up and crystallizing if you get it too thick with just uh, sugar or sucrose syrup. That is what we feed uh, any colonies that need to be fed, um, just for simple reasons and it's personal choice uh, related to we wanted to just be plain sugar. We're still putting Apes Biologic or similar into the uh, syrup, um, avoiding corn syrup. And again, it's a personal choice. I'm not uh, criticizing anyone who uh, might choose to do something different. But in general, you want it to be thicker syrup so that it can put uh, weight on those colonies. 
another option for feeding this time of year is something like uh, a mix of sugar syrup and, and high fructose corn syrup, which is uh, called uh, a product from Man Lake called Pro Sweet. It's very good for putting winter weight on. It is more closer to a three to one, so it will put weight on very quickly. Uh, I suppose if I was in an urgent situation, um, that would be an option to consider. But again, note that there, there is corn syrup there. It will put weight on. They can survive on that over the winter. Uh, just one word of caution there, when you have a mix like that with high fructose corn syrup, you got to watch the temperature. You do not want to uh, warm that stuff uh, or it could be uh, toxic to your bees. As far as types of feeders this time of year, you can see uh, I like the jar feeders. I've used many feeders uh, over the years and there's pros and cons. The biggest negative is the amount of feed that you can put on this uh, jar feeder. So there's some other great options if you wanted to put a couple gallons of feed on a colony, but I like the simplicity. Uh, in general, they don't leak. They're easy to change out. It's very easy to see uh, what your level of syrup is. And it's just one of those things that surprisingly, I found myself going back to uh, versus all the many other kinds of feeders there are. Another option would be putting a frame feeder in your colony. Um, there's often some drowning. Uh, try to put some sticks and things like that or get one with cap and ladders will limit the amount of drowning there. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the other thing you want to uh, know there is that you're going to open the colony every time you fill it and you don't know how light it is in, unless you uh, look inside that. I think there's a bee crawling across the camera right now, so I don't know whether we see that on the video. But um, so frame feeders, uh, bucket feeder on top is another way to get a lot of feed on. Uh, in general, they're pretty good unless they leak the occasional bucket feeder that leaks. Uh, there's the box top, like the large two gallon feeders, hive top feeders, um, entrance feeders. Um, you can get away with them sometimes a year but I don't usually recommend them this time of year because of robbing. I don't know if you can see the screen. I do have screens uh, bent in front of my uh, smaller colonies to avoid robbing um, because uh, uh, if there are other colonies nearby that are not getting fed or wild colonies, etc., or someone else that's uh, not feeding their colony uh, and has a lighter colony, they may rob that out this time of year. Uh, so, yeah, a variety of types of feeders really depends on the type of year. As far as uh, how long to feed, again, just going to be temperature dependent. You want enough time for them to dry it out. And if it gets too late in the year and your colony still needs a feed, if it has enough to make it to the very cold time, like late December, early January, then you could switch to some kind of hard feed. And as far as hard feed uh, there, I'm talking about like fondant, sugar bricks, mountain camp style, uh, something like that, uh, which uh, is not does not have a lot of moisture in it. If your colony is still uh, too light, that's something that I would consider. Um, one of the other things I wanted to note is that you know I've heard regionally from a lot of the online forums and from talking with people that. Uh, the Varroa mites are, for some, have been more of a challenge this year. It's not a huge surprise. I kind of anticipated this in March uh, after the very warm periods we had over the winter and not a lot of extended cold around here. Uh, we see uh, worse, for example, worse yellow jacket populations and things like that this year because of, as a result of that. Um, so uh, that may be playing into some of the challenges people are having bringing uh, mite uh, levels under control. If you haven't done anything about it yet and your mite counts are too high this time of year, you probably have a doomed colony is the reality. If you're still kind of struggling with bringing them down, um, you still have some options. Uh, a very harsh but quick option would be something like formic uh, acid. And if your mite counts are not extremely high and you can wait until cold weather as you get farther into late November, uh, oxalic acid treatments are a good option. And I like late November, December timeframe. Uh, when we get into a more brutalist period, it's a great time to bring anything that's not under control finally down to where it needs to be and to clean things up as we go into spring. Um, so I want to show you a couple of winter feed products as well. Okay, so here's a product from Strong Microbials. 
super fuel. Um, nice patty in that it has Apis Biologics in it, um, and it also has probiotics. And probably the only downside for me is it does have high fructose corn syrup in it, but would be a great uh, product uh, for over the winter just as far as convenience. It does come in kind of a patty. You can see some patties in the bags. More or less like a pollen patty. They lay across a colony. Another product, uh, not new of course, is this Hive Alive fondant. Um, there is, uh, there are 2.2 pound patties and I think they have a new five pound patty as well. The super fuel that I just mentioned is a one pound patty. So if you're looking at uh, size and of course, uh, like a block of Baker's fondant, uh, the 90, 10, uh, 50 pound squares, you can cut chunks of those with just plain uh, uh, sugars and corn syrup in it uh, also would work. Uh, the mountain camp style of uh, sugar on a newspaper spritz down with water uh, if it's cold enough out can work uh, if it's too early they will definitely haul that out of the colony uh, making candy boards or sugar bricks uh, also uh, other options i kind of like what i like about hive alive uh, is uh, that it has uh, the thymol and other good stuff in there with no corn syrup what i don't like is the packaging and I kind of cut into this plastic square and then you're gonna to have to go remove it etc okay so just I don't care what you buy but uh, I'm in the farm shop now which we're open on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. or by appointment uh, outside of Carlisle PA uh, the, a luggage scale is a good way to weigh your colonies uh, of course if you don't have varroa mites under control that's that's the biggest concern you have right now uh, along with getting feed and up to weight if you have any lightweight colonies. Again, different kinds of feeders here. Um, usually personal choice. Uh, we've got some, some shims. If you have to do emergency feed over the winter, I like to put a piece of Reflectix underneath all of uh, the hive lids. Uh, push that condensation to the outside. Um, always uh, an option there. And then, of course, if you are, if you are um, still trying to bring mites under control, I don't really have enough time yet for something like Formic. It's just I'm always kind of concerned uh, this time of year. Too much stress on the colony. But if your mites are high, uh, they're not going to make it without some kind of in intervention. And if you haven't treated yet, probably not uh, likely to make it. Anyway, uh, as far as the late winter treatments I was talking about, here's a syringe. You can do an oxalic acid dribble if you look that up. Uh, Betterbee.com has good information on their site. If you have a vaporizer, that's another option as well. Uh, we do rentals of uh, ProVap vaporizers here at the farm shop. Uh, you get uh, two days for $25. That comes with a half-face organic respirator uh, mask as well. Um, and again, I don't recommend that yet uh, but anytime november through uh, february or march uh, is a good time for that treatment ideally late november through uh, late december that's uh, a good window of time at least around here uh, so at the end of this video i will um i will leave you um with a couple of graphs or charts showing um the weight recommendations i kind of go by uh, what i've done in the past but these are good points of reference i'll leave the uh, leave the sources there so you can see where they came from in general we primarily run eight frame equipment ourselves so if i have a double deep colony eight frame i'm trying to get somewhere around 105 pounds total weight uh, if i'm a little bit less if i'm running a deep and a medium which is sometimes called a story and a half i'm doing more of that these days um, if I have a nuke or a double nuke, uh, double nuke might be 75 pounds, less than that for a single five frame nuke, 10 frame equipment. Um, I'm usually looking at 125, 130 pounds for a double deep, but I'll leave a chart there for you, uh, with those references. Um, and I hope everyone's fall is going well. I hope your varroa mites are under control. Um, uh, you're getting all your colonies, uh, 
prepped and ready for winter and enjoying any honey that you got this season.